of excited this morning. I uh, had a chance to get up early and or dawn and maybe even do a couple of videos and it was fun. Kind of enjoyed it. It was like crisp and cold out and kind of relaxing. You know, it's like you get a chance to just be still, you know, and kind of let God do His thing and listen and meditate, pray, sometimes read the Word, sometimes just be still and let Him do the talking. You ever done that? The jet goes flying over. <laughs> taking the time to just, you know, be still, sit still. I found in my life that whenever I take time to be still, it's not just to know God, but sometimes it's to know myself, it's to kind of get a handle on what I'm thinking, or what I'm feeling, or what I'm reacting to, because I get a chance to ponder what maybe I didn't have a chance before to think about. The scriptures tell us to think on these things, you know, and it lists basically what you should think on, you know, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is holy, you know, if there be any virtue, there be any praise, but I find that sometimes when I deal with Christians, they didn't get the memo. Hey, you know the memo, you know, the one that Jesus sent out, you know, to everyone in the world, you know. Oh, you don't you don't know what memo that is? <laughs> but it's the one that starts off with there are no perfect people and it ends with there is no perfect church. <laughs> you know, the one that says people that keep telling you there's a true church or true believers or true this or true that basically aren't true. Because <laughs> every time you have to say something's true, we all know that that's a salesman gimmick. It's one of those things to say, now we all know, and usually that means, no, we don't all know. We are being dragged into something that we may not have agreed to, but it's a common gimmick to get people to listen or to participate in what you're about to say, which usually isn't true. <laughs> but the memo went out and it said that there are no perfect churches. You know, Jesus in the letters to the seven churches pretty much stated the case of the church. Not just through the ages and not just in the past, but in the present. There are seven types of churches, you know, according to Jesus. Now, you could argue with that and good luck. <laughs> you have to argue with Jesus about it. I'm sorry. He's the one who said it. I didn't. But there are seven different types, you know, and, and uh, you can read about them. They're in the book of Revelation, you know, and he pretty much kind of stated where they were at, what they were doing, what he liked, and what he didn't like. But he didn't say any of them were perfect. Matter of fact, I think he kind of said each one of them had something to do. It's kind of like you and me, you know. We can uh, pretend like, you know, we're perfect. Or we could be honest, truthful. You see, at some point in time, you get involved with some people that you, you got saved with, and you, you kind of liked it, and you had fun, you know, and you were like all excited. But then it got a little bit of friction, you know, things got a little rough, you know, you started rubbing off on each other, you know, butting heads. There are things you agreed with and didn't agree with, you know, and hopefully if you were not just a religious experience and more of a relationship experience with Jesus, then you went where God told you. If he told you to stick it out like he did in the book of Revelation to some of them in some of the churches, then you're staying put right where you're at because whether you agree or not, God is working on you and those that are in your church because you're there for a purpose. You're there by design. You're there by direction. You've been told to go and to do and to be where you are. You see, God likes to do that because He wants the responsibility. He doesn't want you to take responsibility for yourself. 
That'd be stupid, wouldn't it? I mean, pardon me, but I don't mean to call you stupid, but I would be stupid if I looked at you and said, you know, I think you're pretty smart. I think you're pretty wise. You know, I think you know what's going on, so I think I'm going to trust you because, after all, you're the smartest man I know. Or woman. Of course, then I have to go over and look at God and say, I'm sorry, God, I know you're real. I know you're alive. I know you said you'd direct me. I know you said you'd protect me. I, said, I know you said you'd comfort me. I know you said you'd lead me wherever you want me to go. And I know you said you'd be with me every single moment of the, my life. And every day of my life, I could ask you for wisdom. I could be directed by you, and I could follow you. But, God, I think i got a better way. I think I'm going to follow this man today. Okay? You just kind of, you know, back off and let me go my way. <laughs> I think we might not be doing that. At least, I don't. What about you? Have you found the perfect pastor, the perfect teacher, the perfect elder, the perfect deacon, the perfect setting? Or do you just accept that God works through these people? You see, there's a big difference there. And at times, God may not work through some of these people. <laughs> so, I have to think on these things. I have to sit back sometimes, you know, kind of ponder them. Like, hmm, do I pick the man or do I pick the God? You know, God or man, man or God? Hmm, which way do I go? <laughs> Interesting choice. If I go with the man, then why am I going there? Is it because God sent me there? Or is it because I'm just hanging out, hanging loose, hanging tight, or just pretending to be there? Interesting. Me personally, I got the memo. <laughs> I was told that in the memo that I was a member of the body of Christ, that there was this big, giant group of people that I was going to be involved in and that not everybody was going to have the same purpose. Not everyone was going to have the same knowledge. Not everyone was going to have the same design. Not everyone was going to understand everything because it's kind of like some people were going to be like fingers and toes, you know, and some people were going to be like a nose and Personally, if my nose knows how to sniff, I don't want my toes sniffing, you know. No offense, but my toes are too close to the ground, I don't want them sniffing. I'd rather my toes learn how to walk, and I'd rather my nose learn how to sniff. I'd rather my hands learn how to operate, and I'd rather my brain learn how to think. When I look at the body of Christ, it makes perfect sense to me. Now, <laughs> maybe in your perfect church, you don't need the body of Christ because you have a perfect body in that church. Right. <laughs> so, how true do you think true is when people keep saying, true believers, true church, are you really saved? Are you really, 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 really part of whatever it is that they really think? Because they really don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not too often that you actually hear someone stand up and say, Now, God told me that I'm supposed to accuse these people of certain things. Because whenever I ask them, they never say it that way. They always say, Well, the scripture says. I said, I'm not asking what the scripture says. I'm asking you, what did God tell you to do? Because if God is real, is he? They always say, Of course God's real. Well, then, is God dead? Well, no, he's not dead. Well, then, will God speak to you? Well... Yeah, he speaks to me in Scripture. It's good. Then did God tell you to? Well, the Scripture said, I said, I'm not asking you what the Scripture said. What did God tell you to do? And I've never found people that accuse each other or recuse each other of anything really ever telling me that God told them to say so. That might be too personal. You know, they might have to answer for that. So, whenever you kind of see all this finger pointing, Try looking up finger pointing in the Bible. There's a warning against it. You might want to Google that if you don't want to look up in Strong's Concordance or some topical thing because sometimes those things just give you partial. Just put it in a Google search engine somewhere, you know, and just say finger pointing in the Bible. <laughs> Boy, would you be surprised. Or look up something like wagging the tongue, you know, because you know what wagging the tongue is, that's kind of like gossiping and slander, you know, and all these other things that are kind of like tearing people down, you know, and kind of like 
word bullying, you know, or religious bullying, or kind of like brainwashing or propaganda. Try putting that in Google search once. Just wagging the tongue, you know. See what you get. <laughs> Ooh, that's not very nice. You're making me look at the Bible. <laughs> well, you know, you could be in the church, quote unquote, or you could be in the body of Christ, or you could be in both. You see, I know what the church is for because I read the memo that went out. You know, the memo told me what the church is for. And I like it. <laughs> I like it like that. When I don't like it there, I ask God, can I go over there? You know, and when God sends me over there, I like it there. Because he sent me. So whenever I want to go somewhere, I ask him and he sends me. And I kind of enjoy it that way. Now, you may not like that. And you may not like it like that. Maybe you like it where you don't have to think. You don't have to talk to God. You don't have to hear from him. You don't have to be led by him. You don't have to do what he says. Maybe you like being told what to do by men. Okay. <laughs> if you say so, if that's what you want to do, okay. But I think there's something better in store, you know. I think maybe if you really researched it, you know, like talk to God about it, talk to Jesus. If you decided to be born again, you know, like of the Spirit, you know, that's supposed to come inside you and lead you in the way you should go, teach you and instruct you and help you to have the mind so that you could understand what you're reading. I may be wrong, but I've lived 35 years that way and I kind of think it's working, you know. Seems like it works that way. Now, maybe I'm wrong, or maybe I'm right. And the only way that I could see that you would be wrong or right would be to find someone who actually knows the truth or is the truth and I think Jesus was called not just the way not just the life but the truth hmm see that's kind of why I like to get away from everybody I like to stop for a minute think about what I maybe heard like on a Sunday you know message maybe consider what was taught you know like maybe in a Bible study I like to kind of compare things you know like well they said this but I can't find it in the Bible but they tell me it's there or they tell me that if they explain it it's there Ooh, okay so then I like to step back and kind of go Maybe I need to talk to God about it, because, you know, these men, you know, and women, they kind of get funny ideas sometimes, and maybe they kind of made a mistake, you know, and kind of took a turn to the left, or the right. <laughs> and maybe they're learning, too, because as soon as I ask them, it seems like they kind of, kind of sidestep it sometimes, you know, and so maybe they're not as smart as I think they are. So for me in my walk with God, I like to think that he's smarter than I am, and he's smarter than people teaching me. So I like what people tell me, and I listen very carefully, you know, and I pay attention when I go to a church, because I like to write it down, you know, take notes, because I'm going to go back and ask God about it. Well, God, what about this one? Did they quote that scripture right? <laughs> I mean, that sounds a little weird, you know. Didn't make sense when I heard it, and now that I wrote it down, it still don't make no sense. Hmm. Maybe that's why I'm supposed to study. But do I need to confront them? Not really. You see, they're learning too. And so, they got the memo. Just like you do. It's in the book of Revelation. You know, the memo that said nobody's perfect and that all we are as sinners all we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God no one has attained unto perfection but we're being made into the likeness of God hmm that kind of sounds better
because then I don't have to worry about that finger pointing stuff, you know. Then I don't have to go after anybody, you know, and tell them they're wrong and I'm right, or they're right and they're wrong, because they may be right in what they're doing because they're learning. It's kind of like this, you know. I've never yet seen any parent when a child is just beginning to learn to walk. And now just think about this for a minute, carefully. Think very carefully what I'm saying. Here's a little baby. That baby's been crawling all over the floor and he's been like a little rug rat just moving and grooving and just, you know, stomping and chomping at the bit to just move as fast as he can all over the place. And he's gotten into everything he could, so he had all those child locks, you know, and put him in a little like, you know, container, keep him safe, you know. But that little that little turkey man, now he's trying something different. He's beginning to stand up. Oh, and you're helping him, you know. And uh you know, you begin to help him take the first step and the second step, you know, and the third step. Then you let go and he falls down on his face. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've never seen anybody take that little child and just beat the snot out of them because they fell down. I've never seen anybody chastise the child because they couldn't walk yet. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever seen any parent treat a child that was learning how to walk by yelling and screaming at them. I think they were thrilled when the kid learned how to walk one step at a time. I don't know about you, you know, maybe I'm a little weird. Maybe I read that memo, but I kind of think that's where we're all at, you know. Maybe we're all learning to walk, you know, and <laughs> maybe some of us got the steps down a little better than others, and maybe some of us don't, and maybe some people think that, you know, you walk on your hands, you know. Okay, if you want to, you know, maybe some are going to be gymnasts someday. But somehow, I just don't see where beating each other up and stomping on each other and chomping on each other really is teaching anybody anything at all. God giveth liberally and abradeth not. Woman, well, where art thou thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. The grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. The free gift, the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Jesus, by grace are you saved, and hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? I don't know about you, but, you know, this judgment thing that Jesus said don't do and then people try to tell me why they can, I kind of think that he was setting you up for a fall, you know, because really, when you judge, you know, you really don't have any way of proving to me that you're qualified to judge someone. Because, frankly, you prove you can't because of what you judge people with. <laughs> you can't see their heart, so how do you judge them? Now, if you told me, well... I judge people by giving them grace and mercy as I received grace and mercy. You know, I might I might consider that. You know, I might think that, wow, you judge wisely because you entrusted judgment into he who can see the heart and who can judge correctly, as Jesus said. Because when people try to tell me about discernment versus judgment and all these other quote unquote ideas they have, I always find they're saying that so that they can condemn someone. I never find it so that they can forgive someone. I wonder why that is. Maybe Jesus had a point about judge not. And maybe since God is judging us and forgiving us, and God is extending his mercy towards us, maybe in our life, maybe in our day, maybe today we ought to forgive one another as Christ has forgiven us. We ought to be merciful to one another as 
He has been merciful to us. And I don't know about you, but when I got saved, God never condemned me, you know, right off the bat and said, Look, stupid, you don't even know the plan of salvation. What's the matter with you? Don't you know by now? I'm, you know, <laughs> well, sorry, Lord. I, well, wait a minute, that wasn't the Lord telling me that. That was a man saying that. So, I think in this learning process we call life, people need to back up a little bit and rethink this whole idea of like the body of Christ and the church and quit pointing fingers and worrying about another man's servant because I think Jesus' disciples did the same thing. And I think Jesus wasn't too thrilled about their response at that time. So I don't think he's going to be too thrilled about your response in this time if you go the same way. I think he can handle it better than we can because, frankly, I've seen everybody exposed without people doing it by way of God revealing it through the circumstances of their life. He doesn't need anybody to defend God. I've never seen a defense lawyer stand up and say, I've been called to defend God. Matter of fact, I don't know of any gift of the Spirit that would be called defending God. Now, people like to use that as a title. People like to play games with theology. But, you know, I've never yet seen where Jesus did that. Defended God. Even when accusing, I think Jude warned us that even Michael didn't raise a rallying cry against Satan for the body of Moses, but said, the Lord rebuke I think we can trust God to take care of the mess. And the rest of what we are, maybe we just need to keep practicing walking a little better because I think we're stumbling quite a bit and falling flat on our face. And the less you do, the less you're going to start pointing out to others how come you're so much better when you forgot how much you used to fall down to. Maybe you need to remember that. Maybe you need to think on these things today.